Hello everybody, welcome to the Red Men TV. Uh, thank you for joining me on this lovely Tuesday afternoon. Uh, I'm joined by David Maddock of The Mirror, uh, Maddock Mirror on Twitter, if you will. David, thank you very much for joining me today. No problem. Always, always glad to be a guest on your show. Thank you very much. Uh, I can see we, we had a little discussion about it. Your plants are looking very healthy in the back there, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, been, I've been tricking out my balcony with lots of greenery. So Lovely. Um, so we're here to talk about uh, Costa Simicas, or Chimicas, I believe is how you're supposed to say it. I'm sure everybody in the comments will be... Tell me how you pronounce it, because I've no idea. But It's like sometimes there's a silent T, and then now it's a CH, is what I've been told. It's Chimicas, is what I've now been told. Um, who knows? But listen, um, we're not going to be too long today. I just want to discuss sort of the timeline of this transfer more than anything, David. And, you know, who better to talk to? I mean, you were, as you said to me just before filming, you were very much on the Jamal Lewis transfer. And so when did you first hear of Liverpool's interest in Costas? Well, actually, um, last maybe uh, last January or even before that, Liverpool were, were linked with him. And, um, so I was aware that he was one that they were they were <clears throat> aware of and interested in uh, in terms of his quality and his age and the profile. And Chris, we've spoken before a lot about uh, the profile that Liverpool have now about players, um, and they don't just do it over a, a couple of games or a couple of months. They 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 literally run the numbers over seasons and seasons. So they've been aware of him since at least 2017 when, uh, and, and uh, I mentioned this yesterday in the mirror, that uh, Petro was, was out on loan at Willem uh, two or however you say that, uh, and their European scouts spotted him there and he was, he was also out on loan from Olympiakos, just a young lad, he was only 20 at the time. Um, and, and they've followed him ever since and kept in touch. So there was some suggestion they may um, make a move for him in January. They never did. And then, of course, we get onto the Lewis um, saga or mini saga. Um, and But he was always one. And, and um, uh, you asked me off air uh, previously about, well, you know, what was, uh, I'm going to call him Costas, was Costas uh, first choice? Well, Liverpool don't really operate like that anymore, apart from when they have um, players like Van Dijk, who clearly Van Dijk was, was their only choice. They didn't see anyone else of the quality that was any better than what they had. Um, they stuck with Van Dijk, waited and waited for him, eventually got him. Uh, but their usual um, policy, especially with... A player who, let's face it, is is going to be back up initially. There's no doubt about that. Um, is they have a list, and you know there are maybe three or four on the list. And Liverpool have actually been looking for backup for Andy Robertson for a, for a, for a season now since since Moreno left. Um, and so you know it's not as rigid as well. Lewis was number one. Costas was number two. The, the kid at Bournemouth was number three, etc. It, it doesn't really work like that. But Lewis certainly was the first bid that they made. And then they made another bid um, beyond that. So 10 million, then up to 12 million, but with add-ons, taking it beyond 15 million. It then became clear that Norwich were not going to play ball. They wanted 20 million plus add-ons. And Liverpool were already had spoken to Olympiakos and discovered that the guy was available for around, well, around 10 million. You know, it was, I think it's 11.75, but that's in total over time. So they were thinking, well, do we really want to pay twice as much just for an English player, a, a British player? And of course, you know, that is a, a big bonus in the squad mm. because, you know, the, a European competition, you need a certain number of players. But 10 million more for that, especially when they've got quite a lot of good kids coming through, I, I think not. And they eventually decided that it wasn't worth double, especially in the current climate, uh, to, to, to stick out for Lewis. So they, they went for Costas and, and that's how they arrived there. I mean, I've seen a couple of things over the last couple of days. I'm playing devil's advocate here. 
because I don't want to give too much of what I think away because I'm probably closely aligned to you from what you said earlier anyway. But there is a suggestion that this is maybe a change of strategy. And now you've already sort of, maybe it's a moot point, moot point now because you've already suggested it's not a change of strategy. But when you see Liverpool wait for Alisson and they wait for Virgil van Dijk and then to go on to a second choice um, backup left back, is it? it's not quite the same as what Liverpool... What, how Liverpool got to be the best football side in the, in the world. You know, Liverpool had clear, delineated, uh, you know, lined up targets and we went for them. But you're suggesting that that's not always the case when there are a few people of the same level. I mean, I, I, don't, I think it's rarely the case with Liverpool, to be honest. And, and I mean, Salah's a, a great example. You know, he was, what well, they spent 30-odd million on him, but he wasn't the first choice. There's no doubt. And, and I know um, he wasn't Klopp's first choice. Klopp was more interested in Brandt, um, and they couldn't get him. And then, and then the the recruitment department suggested Salah as an alternative. Klopp looked at him, liked what he saw, realised he could work with him, and again he fit the profile. So I don't think Liverpool really work work like that as such. And I think that the only two that that does apply uh, to are, are Van Dijk and Allison, and they are exceptional because obviously they were, you know, like club record transfers, the pair of them. So when when you're spending that much money, then you, you, you've, you've done all your homework, you've done everything, you've, you've put so much work into it. And you also know that these are players, when, you, when Liverpool spend that much money, it's not speculative. They're players they know will improve the team, that they need to take the next step, which is exactly what happened. So in which case, you know, obviously they tried to get Van Dijk in the summer, fell out with with Southampton, couldn't get him, but realised there's no point in going on to the second choice, which, say, was Kuwabali. But they Klopp categorically said to to me that he he didn't believe Kuwabali was was better than Lovren. And I know a lot of fans will go, whoa, but he was adamant. And he said, you know, who do we go for? You you show me a centre-half and Van Dijk was the only one. So they were prepared to wait because of that judgment but really you know you go through the, the a lot of the signings and they Liverpool are about first of all they're about age they're about potential they're about development they're also about numbers because they you know they do run the numbers and they look to see where there is where, where they can find quality which is undervalued and I think they looked at Lewis and realized his numbers were fantastic Really, still only a, still only a young lads, twenty one. Um, still lots of potential, and also crucially, a fairly significant age difference between him and Andy Robertson. So, Robertson clearly is first choice. I mean, you name me, Chris, a better left back in the Can't. world. There isn't one. There, there just isn't, is there? So, you're not. <laughs> whoever comes in is not getting him out of the team. What they are going to do is provide backup and possibly play in other positions. And I think they saw that with Lewis. I think they saw that he could play possibly slightly further forward. They also felt he could maybe play left side, left side centre, you know, especially if they did ever change their system, which, you know, Klopp has been able to do in the past. So, but also crucially, you know, in five years' time, if Lewis was still, still there, he could well be the number one then because Andy Robertson would be, you know, 30, 31 or whatever. So that was, you know, why they settled on him first of all. Plus there's loads of potential. And, you know, if he if he came in, played well, didn't become the number one, then it, they probably would get a lot more from the, the patron, but not necessarily at 20 million. So I think it was just a judgment call. Um, if Norwich should have, I mean, and I... I feel a bit for Lewis because, you know, it's a chance for them, uh, for him. Norwich would have made decent money out of him. Liverpool were prepared to pay some add-ons if he became a first-team player. And I think Norwich, I mean, obviously it's business, but are they really going to get 20-odd million for a guy who's played 28 games in the Premier League, who is still learning and still, you know, a little bit naive? And... I don't think that they are. And I think, you know, you'd probably see, and you know, I feel, feel, feel for him, but you'll probably see him ending up at, say, a Crystal Palace or something like that for 
12, 15 million. So it was a bit, I think, a bit harsh of Norwich to, to hold out, but it's early in the transfer window. Liverpool wanted to get it done. They, they don't want it hanging. They, the season starts in, what is it, three weeks. So you, you, you don't want to get players coming in in September, October, mm. because the season, honestly, Chris, it, it will come bang and it, it, you'll be right into it. And before you know it, like you'll be, it will be a third of the way into the season and, you know, or, or nearly, and the transfer window is still open. So those clubs, and I think there'll be very few that go out and sign four or five players very late in the window in October. That, 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 when, are, when are those players going to settle in? Well, that's and it, isn't it? That's it. When you think about how long it's taken Fabinho, even Andy Robertson is a good example to come in and, and cement a place in, in the side. They need a few months. Look at Naby Keita. Best part of a year before we start seeing really the real Naby Keita. And th this season, this is the point I was going to make, this season is, it's, 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 it's almost a unique season because there's barely any time between seasons. You, you've got to hit the ground running. You know, it's shown the last two years. If you, if you lose a few games early on, you, you know, you're miles behind in the race. It's what happened to Manchester United and even City this last season. So you, you've got to hit the ground running. So first of all, all those fans out there, Liverpool fans saying, we want signings, we want signings. When are they going to fit in? You know, they're not for this season. They're certainly not for the first half of this season. You won't see Costas. I tell you, you will not see him playing in the Premier League until November, Christmas time. He'll play, you know, League Cup game or whatever if that competition actually goes ahead. And I'm not sure it will. So you won't see him until Christmas. And I think any signing would be the same. Um, like with the exception of, say, Sancho, if United sign him, clearly he'll go straight in the team. And I think he would be able to fit in quickly. Most signings not going to be the case. If City, for instance, make four or five signings, it'll take them a season to gel them all in. The same with Chelsea. They look like they want to make four or five signings. People say, oh, that'll turn them into title contenders. Not this season, it won't. So Liverpool wanted to get it done early. They want to get it out of the way. They want to get him settled in. And they don't want to make many signings. It all makes sense this season before we even talk about the economic impact of COVID-19. And do you know what? That's a, it's an interesting thing. And it's something I, I was saying to one of the lads here um, today is that, you know, I actually think the age of him is actually probably better for that as well. I think, you know, you get a 20 year old lad in who's played 28 games in the Premier League and then doesn't play for six months. What does that do to their development? Whereas this is a lad who, yes, he's only 24 years a, of age, but, you know, 46 games under his belt last season at the top level, including Champions League, including Europa League, a couple of seasons of, of winning the, 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 the Super League as well. So He's a lad who's, who's played a lot of football already in a young career. Shouldn't take him too long to bed in it. Maybe not as much as like a Jamal Lewis might on, on, on feeding on scraps, essentially. Yeah, and I, mean, I think that that's it. I, I think what you have to remember, and this is another reason why people are now saying, oh, it was a ploy by Liverpool. Lewis wasn't. They have never really in for him. They were in for him. They wanted to get him at a certain price. Um, they were struggling at that price. And then realised, I mean, I think they just did the judgment call because of some of the reasons we just said. Judgment call, we're not going to get him. If we're going to, I think they realised if they were going to get him for anywhere near the price they wanted, they're going to have to wait until right until October. Mm. I, I, and, 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 and again, you know, Liverpool fans are now sort of, oh, this guy, they're showing clips on YouTube or whatever and how great he is. He's not, he's not a first choice signing. He's coming in to understand the best left back in the world so he, he he will provide squad depth there's no doubt he can probably play left side slightly further forward I'm not quite sure how it would fit in he might have to learn how to play clock system and possibly play the left of the, the midfield three maybe one day he could even play left of the front three but you know He's he was a converted winger as well, wasn't he? Actually, we've got a comment coming from Nick Nakamura, who says, uh, Shimakas is the signing I didn't expect us to make. Not because he isn't the best left-back in the world. Not because he's, he's the best left-back backup in world football, but because he's too good to be a backup. 10 out of 10 signing. Uh, Ethan Gorman as well. 
O'Gorman, sorry, good for when Robertson needs resting instead of chucking Milner out there all the time, even though he does a job anyway, absolute workhorse. Um, what, what, so taking those two comments on board and what do you make of Chimacash and how he'll actually fit in? Because I've read quite a lot now, I've seen quite a lot of him um, and he does seem to be a player who is very good on the front foot, likes to drive with the ball at his feet, likes to go at defenders, maybe doesn't always make the right decision when he gets to crossing, but that's certainly something that we can work on. Yeah, no, I'm, I think you know that's it. It's potential. Is it? I mean, he's 24, but he's not played. He's not played that many games for Olympiacos. He's really had one full season, and he's done really well in that season. And of course, you know the Greek Super League. It's no. It's nowhere near the level of the Premier League. So you're taking a bit of a risk. He's played in the Europa League, done all right. Liverpool watched him against Burnley in 2018. I think saw him then and realised he was a decent player. Um, <laughs> He's got potential. For me, I think I think they've looked at him, looked at his numbers and, and thought, yeah, he has the quality to develop. And they, if they develop him, yes, at left back, but possibly further forward. Because essentially like a Milner, you know, Milner plays, he plays left side of, of midfield, the midfield three. He plays left back. He can also play right side, or he could play right side of the front three, mm. or right side of the midfield three. So he, he possibly can't do the, the more attacking role anymore, but he used to be able to do that. So versatility. Costas, he maybe, I mean, I think he, he can do that, but he comes in, he understudies, he allows Milner to understudy elsewhere. It, it, it provides options. And, you know, if Klopp and his coaching team, if they... If they use their magic, you look at, I don't know, Oxley chamberlain who came in, he wanted to play central midfield. He wasn't ready to play central midfield when he came. Eventually, he did. It took six months, but he then was able to play. And, and if you remember, before he got injured, he was absolutely fantastic in that sort of more forward uh, attacking midfield role. He was, he was absolutely brilliant, but in the midfield three, not the front three. And I think that could be a possibility. And... and provide so he'll get games elsewhere also and you know if Robertson gets injured, injured or needs a rest he'll, he'll back him up at left back too for 7 million quid that's you know it's absolute peanuts and then if he wants to go in two years time they'll get more they'll definitely get more than they paid for him one more comment one more question then Umar Khalid says with added death we might win the FA Cup which I like the sounds of, Umar. Um, and then the final question for you, David, before I let you go, mate, is what's next for Liverpool in this transfer market? Uh, probably a centre half. Um, I mean, they're saying they're not going to, they don't, there'll be few, if any, more signings. I think they will. I think they'll get a centre half. Um, the, the ben, ben White at, at uh, um, Brighton, who was on loan at Leeds. He looks like a Liverpool signing to me. He's a young lad. He's got potential. He's had a really good season. But the problem is the fee. And I, and I don't think Liverpool are in any rush to go out there and spend 25, 30 million on a centre-half who's not going to be a first choice. So, But at the same time, they probably do need backup unless key Yana Huba makes... No, so I said that really quickly so people didn't notice my pronunciation. <laughs> if you tried this season, then perhaps he can be the fourth choice. Um, the, 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 the same with the other Dutch lad whose name I can't remember. Oh, I can't pronounce. But um, he, uh, one of those two possibly could be fourth choice and get them through. But it'd be a little bit like when Klopp came in with Alexander-Arnold and he said, remember he first came in and he was chatting privately to some of the local press lads and he said to us, I've got this dilemma because this kid is going to be fantastic. I absolutely know it, but he's not physically strong enough yet for the Premier League. So do I go out and get a backup to climb and maybe stop his development or do I risk Klein not getting injured when Alexander-Arnold's not ready? In the end, he risked it and he, didn't get injured and, and Alexander Arnold came in. So good call. He may do the same this time with those two. Those That's two. the risk though, because it's risk. it is a risk, isn't it? Because, you know, Matip and Gomez aren't available for every game. If you'd had two people, not ability wise, but if you had two people who are for, available for as many games as Virgil van Dijk 
I think you'd be all right. But when Mata played seven times, I think last season, and Gomez has had his injury history as well. You know, that's the that's the risk for me. And and I think, you know, like Umar says there, you want to challenge for other cup competitions as well. If you're serious about the FA Cup and the League Cup as well, and I'm not sure Klopp is, um, then we probably do need a fourth choice. But a fourth choice, it's going to cost us more than we sold Lovren for, uh, for the level of player that we want. It, it, that's absolutely true. And, and, I mean, you are signing, because Gomez is still young and will improve. And he's... And his partnership with Van Dijk is absolutely already, you know, they're so close. You know, you can see how close they are. The partnership on the pitch is 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 very close. They're only going to get better. And Van Dijk improves players. So Gomez, to me, will be better, much better this season than he was last season. And, and, and a, you know, he's already a title-winning centre-half. Uh, Matip is a fine centre-half. Yeah, he, has, he does have injury worries. There's no problem... No doubt about that. One thing I say about Gomez, he gets slaughtered for it. You know, he's, he's a lot of fans. Oh, you can't trust him. His, his biggest injury recently is that the lab broke, had his leg broken. You no, know, you can't. You know, you can't do anything about that. Yeah, he was out for a long time with it, but somebody broke his leg at Burnley, so you can't. You know, it's not his fault that. And then he had a, a cruciate ligament as well, which you know when, when Klopp first arrived, again, you know that was just unlucky, and he's he came back from that. So to me. I think he, you know, he's shown toughness in coming back from injuries. But I do, they obviously do need a fourth centre half. What'll be interesting to see if the League Cup really does go ahead, or maybe in a different format this season. You know, when when Liverpool will probably just play they, their youth team, essentially, or you know, the under twenty threes, essentially. So maybe maybe you don't need the depth. Sorry, there's no Club World Cup this time to blame it on. I don't know why my microphone muted itself then. No, it did. It muted. I was trying to lip read you. Yeah, I was like, I was, I was sat, my hands were here and it went mute and I was like, what's, that, what's happened there? Like, um, It seems like a good place uh, to end the show. But before I do, um, David, thank you very much. Do go and check out um, and buy a copy of The Mirror as well. Yeah. Uh, it's a great journalist sitting there the, as well. We need Pardon? To use, buy a copy of the paper. We need to keep newspapers alive. I, I must admit, I, I still buy a newspaper. Yeah. Uh, and I've done so more recently. <laughs> It, for the you know like for the, the the politics in this country now, we need newspapers to 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 stand up and question this Tory government, and one of the few that does it is the Daily Mirror. So if 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 we do not, then we'll you'll see what happens in the United States happening in the UK. So go out and buy the Daily Mirror because at least we question this horrendous Tory government. And follow uh, at Maddock Mirror on Twitter as well. I've got a clip uh, for a show for you before I sign off. So like the video. Uh, and this is a clip that, from Red Men Reacts. It's available on the redmentv.com. It's £5 a month. Go over there, support the channel. Uh, we exist on YouTube because of the lovely subscribers over on the website that enable all of this to be possible. But David, thank you very much. Enjoy the clip and we'll see you next time. Ciao. Sorry for rattling on. Him being an Olympiacos Academy product, the Reds knew exactly what he needed to excel. Space to dribble and cross. Most of Olympiacos' sequences are built to create space for Simakas on the left and then most used in Europe 4-3-3 formation. The Greek side tried to build up from the right-hand side, but mostly to then make a quick switch to the left once the opportunity arose. By overloading the right flank, recycling possession, narrowing the playing field, the Reds could isolate Simakas, usually with the opposition winger on the other side, and play a nice switch to him at the correct moment. That's the exact stuff you, you when you're reading that oh, excuse me when you're reading that you're thinking oh yeah that's kind of what liverpool do as well yeah. trent's over there he's got the big switch on maybe tendo maybe it's fabinho and that's the type of thing that you read and you go i can see how you fit in better than a youtube video yeah analysis